Greetings, everyone. Today's video features Wyalusing State Park in the southwestern corner of Wisconsin, where the Wisconsin River meets up with the mighty Mississippi. You can see the rivers meet here on the satellite image from Google Earth. Google Earth, by the way, is a fantastic tool. I use it all the time to see where I'm going to be camping. Sometimes you can even pick out your campsite and see if the elevation from the front of the campsite to the back creates a leveling problem. Very cool. Anyway, it's about 166 miles from western Kenosha County where I live to the park. And along the way you drive through flat cornfields of southeastern Wisconsin, through the cornfields of central Wisconsin until you get to the rolling hills where the glaciers missed out in western Wisconsin. And well, yep, kind of more cornfields out here. We grow lots of corn in southern Wisconsin, along with soybeans and a boatload of dairy cows too. But along the way, there's some pretty neat little towns like Argon, where you can take a break from driving and do a little fishing. Yeah, that looks like a real fisherman right there, buddy. The land for the park was sold to the state of Wisconsin in 1912 as part of the state's effort to create large parkland areas and this area ultimately was designated a state park in 1917, making it one of the state's oldest. Originally named Nelson Dewey State Park, the name later changed to Wyalusi, which is a Muncie, Delaware Native American word meaning home of the warrior. Clearly the pandemic has impacted the parks. Normally you'd have to wait in line and register to get your campsite, but now you just drive right into the park, get to your campsite, and then the camp host comes around and makes sure that you're where you're supposed to be. Actually, I kind of like that a little bit better. It's faster. Now that we're set up, I think I'm gonna take a little look around. Here's a concession area. At the Wisconsin Ridge Campground, it's closed right now, it's early in the morning, but you can get ice cream bars and snacks and ice and bait and so on. Pretty nice bathroom here. Along well, with the weather forecast. All right, I'm walking down the path to uh, someplace called Lookout Point at Wyalusian State Park. I heard a train in the background. There's the, uh, I think it's Burlington Northern line that runs uh, sort of along the Wisconsin River in this area. Maybe we'll catch a train. I think trains are kind of cool. Um, clearly, this is called Lookout Point for a reason. Good morning everyone, it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm talking quietly because we're in a campground and it's uh, pretty packed in here. So I'm going to take a walk around, show you what it's like here at Wyalusing State Park early in the morning. Apparently 6 o'clock in the morning is pretty early for people to get up. I seem to be the only one here. On the left are the primitive sites, no electric. On the right are the sites with electric. And we even have an unusual vacant campsite for a Saturday morning that's highly unusual. Man, it's quiet. Hey, let's check out the, the board here. That's what I like about state parks. They always have these educational things. Look at all the things or all the creatures we can see. We've got bald eagles. We've got a six-lined race runner, whatever the heck that is. Deer, a variety of fish, won't see those on my hike today. And the infamous and relatively ugly turkey vulture. 
Old Wagon Road Trail. I am not thinking that they took a wagon down here. All right, let's take a walk down Bluff Trail. A couple miles, I think it is, if I recall. Good morning. It is Monday morning, August 3rd. About, I don't know, a little after 6 o'clock, I guess. Morning. I am going to take the, I think it's called Treasure Cave Trail at Wyalusing. So if you want to join me, stick around. So, what's that poem? Something about here in the forest, dark and deep. Well, it's pretty early, so it's a little bit dark in here. And I am going to take a short jaunt to something called Treasure Cave. I was here yesterday, but I didn't go to the cave, so let's check this out. It is a little bit steep and rocky, but the trails here are quite well maintained. The uh, trail that is closest to the Wisconsin River is closed because the river is extremely high and the trail I understand in certain spots is uh, flooded so you can't, can't do what they call the immigrant trail. Not to be confused with the immigrant trail that goes out west on the Oregon Trail. So here it is, treasure cave. Um, I'm not going in there. Doesn't look like I can go back too far. Anyway, plus there are bats. And uh, not too many people I know like bats. So I'm sticking to the outside of the cave. Pretty steep though, coming up these stairs. Like heights, this is a great spot. Now, apparently, on these bluffs, this is where uh, Indians would watch for each other coming down the river. The confluence of the Wisconsin and the Mississippi rivers was a neutral territory for all of the Indians, so they came and met here and traded furs and fish and pelts and deer skins and whatever um, and maybe at some point in time somebody stood right on this very point but I am getting off of it this is a uh, Sentinel Ridge Trail it's a little bit steep in places so you know if you uh, have bad knees or something like that you might not want to
try this. It's a little bit tough on the old knees. This is Passenger Pigeon Monument, an ode to the passenger pigeon. And at one time, there were billions upon billions of passenger pigeons in the world, the most populous bird in history. And of course, we successfully hunted them into extinction. And they used to fly down the Mississippi, right down this area here, in such numbers that they would darken the skies. But again, we, uh, we kind of messed that up a little bit, didn't we? Beautiful. Beautiful area. I'm continuing to uh, head down Central Ridge Trail as the trail turns from west to south following the Mississippi River. It's down, down, down. I'm not sure how many feet, uh, but I know it's about, oh, maybe one and a quarter miles down, which means now that I'm thinking about it, it's one and a quarter miles back up as well. Maybe there'll be an easier route to get back up. I think I'm going to be pretty tired by the time I get done with this. down to the bottom and here I am at the Mississippi River. Looks a little blooded. Not quite sure. It's beautiful though. Hope you all enjoyed that video on Wild Lucene State Park. If you were paying attention, you may have noticed that I actually skipped a day, uh, that uh, we went from Saturday to Monday. And uh, the reason was that uh, on Sunday, my buddy and I, Mike, went to Prairie du Chien, which is a town not too far from there. It is actually the oldest settlement on the Mississippi, north of St. Louis. And there was a famous fort there called Fort Crawford. A number of famous people uh, went through that fort. Um, Lewis and Clark were there. William Beaumont, who is considered the, uh, the father of digestive medicine, and even uh, an infamous person, Jefferson Davis, uh, who ultimately went on to lead the Confederacy. We also stopped at a bar called the uh, Dew Drop Inn. We did that because that is the only bar right outside of the park, and Mike and I stopped there 35 years ago when we wore younger men's clothes. And we were the only ones in there when uh, a gang of outlaws on their Harleys uh, came rolling in. Of course, their clothes would work just as well uh, today as they did 35 years ago. It was an interesting experience uh, being in a bar wearing my Izod uh, and preppy shorts uh, with a bunch of uh, Harley riders in there. My next video, hopefully, will be on uh, Peninsula State Park. I'm going camping there in about a month. I've also got some new equipment coming in. I've got a, an actual action uh, camera, uh, a DJI Osmo, as well as a new photography camera. And hopefully that will produce much better videos. And until then, thank you very much for watching this. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll come back for the next video. Take care, everyone.